Hi guys, Jason here from Divine Hammer Computers. Uh, here with a different type of video. I guess we're going to call this a uh, kitchen table. You guys seem to like the uh, Shiba on the kitchen table. So this is our, our kitchen table set, I guess. So I uh, had a customer bring me a laptop, a brand new one, and said, asked if I could set it up for him. So I said, sure. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna, I'm going to show you how we set up a laptop and what I do to get it running as good as possible and up to date and then back to the customer. So here we go. Okay, so just to show you how long uh, this actually takes, I got my stopwatch. Should be able to see that. So we're gonna hit start, and we'll check back on that later, provided I don't accidentally reset it. So the laptop, I actually have never, never even looked at. The guy just handed it to me. Um, I know nothing about it. All I know is he wants to go to Windows 10. So it is an HP NV 15 notebook, 15-K233CA. It's uh, Intel Core i5 5200U, which is 2.2 gigahertz. Uh, looks like it has 8 gigs of uh, DDR3 RAM memory, DVD rewriter uh, drive, Windows 8.1, um, 15.6 inch screen, wireless internet, and Bluetooth. It also has Beats Audio branding, most likely before the Apple actually acquired them. So. We're going to open this up, and I don't think I have a knife here, so we are going to use a pair of scissors and be very careful. Oh. A lot of people, when they cut packages, I've seen it, they go straight down. That scares the daylights out of me. I actually always cut into the cardboard, if that makes any sense, on an angle. That way, if you do cut down, you cut into the cardboard and not into. I don't recommend using scissors for this, guys. Well, I'm a little crazy, so. And hell, I'm in Canada, so, you know, free healthcare, right? Everybody uses that joke. No, not free. <laughs> Taxes and then monthly fees if you earn any money. Okay, so in this giant box, we have battery. It's kind of important. If you ever plan on running it without being plugged in, put that aside. Power cord, you need that when you're not using the battery. Put that there. Undo the Velcro so that we have it loose. And of course the other half of the power cord is whatever country you're in so that you can plug it into the wall. Do that, metal twist ties. Okay, so that's unplugged. We'll plug the two together. Pretty simple to figure out how that goes in. Okay, put that aside. Get the plastic out of the way. And we'll see what else we got in here. Oh, it looks like worldwide phone numbers for HP. That's a cool thing to have. We've got some styrofoam. Let me just grab the whole thing. Pull it out. Oh. oh yeah, we got some limited warranties. Yep. HP Envy. Envy, the name comes from actually from Voodoo PC. Uh, before HP acquired them, uh, they were based out of Calgary, Alberta, in Canada, and. Uh, Normally the top of the line, well they were the top of the line computer pretty much, other than maybe Alienware which got acquired by Dell. So I'm expecting this computer to be pretty, pretty decent. Um, I'll let you know what I think when I pull it out of the bag package here. Well, let's see. I was going to change the memory, or anything like that. I would tell you right now that I hate this. Thank you, Roddy. You guys can hear that. Okay, so looking at this, um, being experienced with laptops that I like, okay, it's got HDMI, is USB, USB three, USB two, wireless LAN, your power port, your SD card slot. There's some ventilation, but not a heck of a lot. Let's hope it. The U stands for ultra low power. I think so. Should be okay. So got another USB 2 there. Headphones slash uh, microphone jack. I don't like those. I like them when they separate them. Um, and then your DVD drive. That's the stuff on the bottom. So yeah, to change the hard drive, to change the hard drive, the memory, the wireless card, anything like that, um, you're going to have to take this whole computer apart. Very disappointing that computers are going this way. Um, I would love to know an answer of why they're doing it. 
to me it kind of ticks me off. Uh, oh, that was a sticker. Kind of going the Apple way, which I really don't like. I would prefer that they allow you to, I mean, upgrade more than just your battery. And actually, I remember Sony years ago actually made it so you couldn't change your battery without installing a new BIOS. So let's see how this goes on here. This is kind of bizarre. I think it has to go in first on that end. And then rock down. There we go. Yeah. And they're both uh, locked, I think. Oh. Apparently it was locked when it got shut. That's interesting. And then this one is just your... Okay, so, a nice HP logo, it's a nice looking laptop, I mean, nice color scheme, black and grey, a little bit of chrome, not the operating system, or the browser. Um, opening the package, I got some fingerprints on the screen, that's not cool, nice fingerprint there. No, it looks like there's a sticker stuck there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Probably not. Probably the lights are too too blinding. But that's not good. Guys, really? Okay. Anyways, I'll clean the screen before I get it to them anyways, or they'll think it's me that did it. Okay, so we're going to plug the cable, the power cable in. Hope you guys are in a good position here to see. I'll move you a little bit. And uh, I'll plug it in and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So now we got the laptop powered on, I believe. Looks like the battery's charging. There's an orange light on the left-hand side. That's a good thing. Um, just going to take another look at it. The other thing I really don't like is that they put your indicator lights on the side. Um, what I'm talking about is hard drive access. I like knowing that the computer's doing something. Maybe that's just me growing up with computers, but I like being able to see that the hard drive is being accessed. Instead, they put it on the side or they get rid of it altogether. Kind of sucks. But, anyways, you guys are here to see this. Let's set this up. So we're going to hit the power button. And we're going to see what happens. Show exactly how long this takes to set up. HP logo. Not very entertaining, huh? There we go. I might just fast forward this part so you guys don't get bored. Okay, so now we've reached uh, the HP setup screen. And whether it's detected my settings or not, um, it's picked Canada, English Canada's language. Keyboard layout is US. It's very important if you don't speak French. Uh, I picked Canadian French once by accident, and it was an absolute disaster. Accents all over everything, and I don't speak very much French. Bonjour. That's about it. Yeah, so that's a mistake if you do that, and it's interesting to try and figure out. Okay, then you have a Windows 8.1 license for the software. And it looks like it has separate uh, end user agreements for Microsoft, Hewlett Packard, which is HP, and McAfee Incorporated. Hmm. I really wish I didn't have to install McAfee right now because I'm going to have to take it back out. Because they only give you a limited trial, and I can't in good conscience give the. Um, I can't give the consumer something that isn't uh, going to stay updated for them. It's going to expire and then they won't do it. Okay, so this is the Windows 8.1 setup. Um, we are just going to call this uh, something generic. This is the, I'm just going to call it laptop because that's easiest to remember. It is laptop. And we'll click next. Okay, now it wants to discover my networks. Now I have several networks in this house actually. 
and uh, I mean studio. Yeah, big time YouTube studio. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. So, ideally, if you have a 5 gigahertz network in your house, and your devices have a 5 gigahertz network, I suggest you use them. Um, simply put, there's way less interference on the 5 gigahertz band. You don't get quite the range, but you get better speed. And in, in a lot of my instances, you, I'm not downloading anything or uploading anything right now, but they'll both be pretty good, but I go with the 5 gigahertz. Of course, and then you need a password, which is... Uh, and we're back. We're connecting online. Okay, so you can go through and you can do all this things. Windows 8.1 actually disables a lot of the stuff for you. Apparently that's not the case with Windows 10. But, um, I mean, unless you're paranoid, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, you can turn the stuff off if you want, though. You can go through the whole thing, customize it. I mean, I was part of the Windows Insider program. I'd been testing Windows 10 for um, just about a year, I guess. And uh, they track everything and find out how you use it, and then they make the program better. So, I don't know. I guess in the user license agreement, it says they have to turn the data over to authorities. Well, they have to anyways. If the police request something, they have a court order, they do it, and... Under the Patriot Act, if you're in the States, yeah, they can pretty much just take whatever they want. Okay. So here's where you'd sign into your Microsoft account. This is where it gets tricky. Microsoft's very smart on this one. You can sign in as your Microsoft account, or you can click don't have an account, or you can, yeah, don't have an account, so you can create an account. Well, I don't want to create an account, and I don't want to sign in as one. I want no account. I want a local account. I realize that I'm going to be missing out on the store, but this is for an older lady, I think 80 years old, and she doesn't do much more than probably email and web browsers and maybe some games of some type. Uh, I'm not sure. But, and if she does do games, then she's going to have to set up an email and download them because as far as I know, Windows 8 doesn't come with, or Windows... 10 doesn't come with games. So if you're missing your solitaire or something, you know why. Doesn't mean there's not a way to reinstall it. Um, I believe I had a program for that before, but my virus scanner didn't like it. Okay, so we're going to go to create a new account. I remember I said I wasn't creating one. We're going to wait. Now, at the bottom, there's sign in without a Microsoft account. So now we need a name. And unfortunately, I didn't get her name. Her son hasn't called me back. So for now, I'm just going to put owner. And I can change that after. So we'll click finish. And now we're through the, going through the uh, Windows 8.1 setup, the rest of it. And it's setting stuff up for us. So just doing this, we're sitting at 17 minutes. So if the video is not 17 minutes long, it's because I skipped through it, sped it up. And currently it's doing updates. Now I'm wondering right here, I know if I install from Windows 8.1 disk, it immediately says, hey, you want Windows 10? And that saves me all the time in the world when it comes to doing updates. So I guess we'll see if that happens. <laughs> Again, I'll fast forward this for you guys so you don't have to wait for it because it's rather boring. Okay, so here we got to the point where it wants us to upgrade to Windows 10 for free. It says the newest version of Windows is now available. You can get it on this PC for free. If you choose to upgrade, you can continue to use your PC while Windows 10 downloads and schedule the installation for a time that's convenient for you. This hardware slash software requirements apply. Feature availability may vary by device. Three gigabyte download. Internet access fees may apply. 
So we do want to upgrade this to Windows 10. So we're going to try it right here. That'll skip me from having to do all the Windows 8 updates. Uh, it says, great, we'll start on you on your free upgrade. We'll be then downloading Windows 10 and let you know when it's time to take the next step. Learn more at Windows.com. So we'll click Finish. Uh, yep, and it wants to do the update 2.712.6 gigahertz. Gag megabytes, sorry. So yeah. So it's getting set up files. And again, I'll fast forward for this for you guys. It's uh, 9.16 at night. We're 28 minutes into this. As you can see, the clock down below. Uh, we'll let it go. We'll see how long this takes. This is going to be fun. Okay guys, two minutes, or two hours, three minutes, uh, it has finally got this screen to get the update started. So, we'll click accept. And now we wait again. Uh, for those of you who might be thinking to yourself, well, maybe the internet's slow. I have a hundred megabit internet. So, I don't know. Uh, just give me a chance here to save your work, schedule it for later. We're going to start the upgrade now. 
And there we go. Okay, so now we've got this part where it's actually going to do the upgrade and it's copying files right now. And uh, we're two hours and ten minutes into this. Still going. I got about 24 minutes left on the memory card. If this doesn't finish, I will dump it to my computer and come back and hopefully catch it before it finishes. If not, you guys will see when it gets there. I guess we'll find out if it can do it in 24 minutes. I have my doubts. One second now. Okay, we're just past three and a half hours. And it wants me to click. These express settings. Next, we are finalizing our settings. Okay, as you can see, we've reached the desktop, and uh, we'll put this on pause here for now, and we'll come back in a bit. And we're back. Hit resume. 3.36, 3 hours, 36 minutes. So now, um, one of the first things we're going to do, um, a lot of people might not know this, Okay, so Windows 10 is up and running, but a lot of people don't know that, uh, oops, if I could spell properly, Internet Explorer still actually exists in Windows 10. Um, not that I'm suggesting it's the best browser or anything like that, but it does exist. Pin it to the taskbar. 
so that the customer will be able to find it easy. Uh, we'll close all those tabs. I'm going to shuffle it over next to the other browser. Okay, so I'm going to launch the new browser, which is Microsoft Edge. And once this finishes loading, I'm going to find a program called PC Decrapifier. Basically what this does is it's a, a program you run, uh, preferably on a brand new computer, and it uh, will clean up a lot of the free junk that comes with it. Alright, close that, close those, let it analyze the computer. And it says it'll take a couple minutes. I'll provide links for all the programs I use in the uh, description below. Um, wild tangent games I want gone. A vast secure line. Caffey, Evernote. Dropbox. All these cyberlinks. Hmm. I'll leave that one. There's the HP Simple Pass by Lenovo. HP Registration, HP Document, Cyberlink, HP Cool Sense. Bonjour. Samsung Live Printer. Utility sensors, event utility, anything Intel I'm going to leave. And most of the HP stuff will be gone. Um, Shockwave player, you can add that back. Intel I'm leaving, Microsoft I'm leaving, Realtek I'm leaving. So, Avast again. Simple pass. Hmm. Okay. We'll remove those twenty eight things.
Okay guys, welcome to day two. We'll fire this HP back up. Getting to be where we wanted, it's just not quite there yet. An SSD would be a real big help in this type of system. It's uh, not as fast as I would like it, but that could also need a defrag too, especially after we get rid of stuff and add more updates. And Clean it up. Okay, so we're back at the desktop. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Microsoft Edge, the new browser. Let that load up. I want to go and search for a program called Advanced System Care. And it's by a company called IOBit. And you're looking for the free version. Now the main reason for getting this is because it comes with an uninstall program. And it also comes with a program to give it a quick tune-up and uh, check for updates. Um, a lot of people might not like this because it does sometimes push other programs on you. But at least it's not spyware. Um, unlike some other free programs that will try and push uh, push programs on you that will actually damage your computer, this one's actually really good at uh, just doing a basic cleanup and so I never installed the uh, malware fighter and on a new computer it doesn't make any sense at all to even try that because there shouldn't be any malware on a new computer you'd hope. Um, except Lenovo they had there with their Silverfish I think it was called. But I'm sure that's gone by now. Basically we just want to remove excess programs. Uh, this comes with a uh, uninstall program that allows you to do batch uninstalls which is really handy for more than one thing and saves me time so I'm just going to close the edge browser here close all tabs yes um, then it asks if you want to do other stuff I always give up my privileges I don't want it I just want the main program and the uninstaller installed the uninstaller now and it's going to launch a web browser to tell you about buying it no nope, sorry uh, click next 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 uh, I don't care what it looks like classic is fine with me um, we're gonna save this scan for later so we'll just close it we'll go to the uninstaller and we'll see if there's anything else left over from the previous uninstall and it still says it has those, those, those. These are stuff we already got rid of, I thought. I guess not. Um, so yeah, there's still a couple HP programs. I'm going to leave CoolSense. I'm going to leave DriveGuard. I'm going to... Wireless Button Driver. I guess I'll leave that. Uh, the Intel ones I'm going to leave. Microsoft stuff I'm going to leave. Realtek I'll leave. Uh, surfing protection, that's the one I just installed. And the clickpad driver and the sensor I'm going to leave for the fingerprint reader. Very unlikely that this lady will use the fingerprint reader, but I'm still going to leave it enabled just in case. Maybe she might like that method of logging in. So, just 
going to remove these six programs. This is a little overkill for her. She's probably just going to use it for surfing the web, checking email, that type of stuff. So, um, odds are she's not going to do anything fancy with it. The other good thing about this program is it does what they call a powerful uninstall where it actually gets all the registry entries and leftover files and folders gone too. Uh, some programs are really sloppy at leaving stuff behind after they uninstall. A lot of times they just only un uninstall things that were installed when they when they were first installed and not the profiles that they created in the life of the program. So basically we want to free up as much space as we can that isn't being used. Um, hard drives tend to lose speed probably after about half full. Uh, apparently that's true of SSDs also. And any any lost performance is, well, not a good thing. So just about done here. Yes. So removing simple paths. No, I don't want to restart the computer yet. Okay, so we want to do a powerful scan. Uh, like I said, look for leftovers of everything. Evernote, that's something she'll never use. Um, it's important to, if you see me typing something into Google or a web browser and then and then just searching for it, I don't recommend you do it that way. It's nice to know the actual websites. Um, I always check to see which link I'm clicking on uh, to make sure that I've got the actual manufacturer's website or a trusted website to download from. Uh, a lot of times people will actually buy ads um, and then name them similar to the program you're looking for just so you'll click it and that's where you end up with spyware doing that. They might actually have the correct file but their ads on the site could infect your computer or it could be that maybe they've modified the main file and it installs spyware for you. So that's not good. Um, so I'm just looking at the toolbars. So basically anything that I already uninstalled. Um, Adobe Flash Object. You know what, I'm getting rid of that because if it's needed I'll reinstall it later. So those are gone. Now we'll look at the. I have come here to <laughs> chew bubble gum and kick ass. Yeah. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Okay, so Roddy's out of bubble gum again. Sheesh. <laughs> oh, my phone. Let's just put you on mute for now. There we go. Phone's on mute. Okay, so I'm going through and removing the Windows 8 apps that were installed by HP. Um, 
Snapfish, which is their printing company, Register with HP, Netflix, McAfee, uh, Weather Channel, all stuff that isn't part of Windows that odds are she'll never use. Okay, we'll do a powerful scan again. Select all and delete. There we go. So I'm going to empty the recycle bin. And now I'm going to do a quick reboot. So you can actually right click on Windows 10 and then go to. It brings up a different menu. Oh, look, it's got some updates to do. That's good. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. I forgot to start our timer. Oops. That was kind of silly of me. Let's uh, find that again. Well, it's going to be a little out now. I guess we'll just let it run through the, the reboot here and we'll just consider that as part of it. So this is for everybody who says that, oh, your job's easy. You just take 15 minutes and you make money off it. <laughs> I don't think there's a single thing that I do that takes 15 minutes. Um, even if I go to a customer's house and find that their cat knocked their modem out of the wall, or their power for the modem, I still don't do just that and fix that and call it a day and bill them for an hour. That's ridiculous. Uh, I'll actually sit down work on the computer, make sure I stay a full hour and do updates for them and clean it up and run spyware scans. And there's nothing that I do that takes 15 minutes. I just don't do it. Um, at the end of the day I want the customer to be happy. And so if that means a little extra work here and there, a little less sleep, it's what it is. And it's also fun dealing with computers like this that are a little slower than I would like, especially setting them up. They take a little while, but it's not the customer's fault that the computer's slow. It's just, it's not a real slow computer. That's the weird part. But the hard drive speed slows a computer down so much. I don't know how I can emphasize that more. Um, I don't know. It, it's so worth it to go out and buy. I don't know a 500 gig SSD. Those are coming down in price. And what are they? Just over 200 dollars, 220, something like that. At least the time I looked last. Throw a 500 gig in there. Hopefully that's enough storage. Um, you'd be amazed at how fast laptops are, even without a fast processor, even without tons of memory. The hard drive speed kills a computer. And putting an SSD in it can make an old computer feel new again. Uh, it makes your computer feel faster, like it's got more power. Won't make your games run any better. It'll make them load faster. Well, it might make them run a little bit better, but... I don't know. One of those things, I guess. I guess I'll just fast forward here and you guys can see what happens when I come back. And we're back. So, still loading the desktop here. It'll only take a second or two. 
Um, so I'm going to run uh, Advanced System Care 8. That program we still installed just a little while ago. And I'm going to click Select All. Uh, click OK on that. And just click Scan and sit back and wait and let it do its thing. Okay, it's done. You see it says that it's uh, medium for security, medium for performance, and bad for stability. This is 12,342 problems. Now, most of these aren't that bad. You're going to have registry errors. You're going to have privacy issues. You're definitely going to have some junk files. Some shortcut errors. That's programs we uninstalled that no longer exist. Um, performance issues a little bit. Browser security issues, sure. And disk errors. You almost always get a 1. Um, it's saying Windows is up to date. I'll be checking that. And it says the hard drive is fine. doesn't need a defrag. But I'll be doing that later anyways. So you click repair. You can actually check automatic repair if you want or shut down the computer if you just want to do it and then shut the computer off. But it's going to let it fix its issues. And then we'll move on.